Today, and we're going to get into talking about characterizing polymer size, uh, mean square displacement, uh, and some other kind of cool, uh, specifically the end root mean squared, RMS, and RSMSD, the root mean squared end to end distance. So this is going to be this kind of R squared value. More on this in just a little bit. So um, polymers, uh, as we saw last time in our cool video, where I, I love to show this one, where our polymers are fluctuating and moving around. Um, it's kind of, it's not kind of, it's very difficult uh, in order to figure out the distance uh, or kind of the distance or to kind of describe the size of a polymer. Um, there's multiple reasons for that. And one of them goes back to kind of the structures that we, uh, or the architectures that we dealt with previously. So if I have, um, how can I describe basically if I have a randomly coiled polymer, if I have a kind of brush polymer, if I have a dendrimer or, a, you know, kind of a, a star, Miko, and there's like these kind of star polymers. Um, there could just be syndiotactic polymers as well, or isotactic or atactic. You all are experts in that at this point. But describing the size of these polymers is really, really difficult, especially if they're all fluctuating and moving around. So we're going to introduce a tool called the root mean squared end-to-end -end distance, which is going to kind of characterize um, an average quantity. R is this vectorial position of polymer at one end, and the other end in three dimensions. So you can kind of imagine... Uh, and actually show one on the next page. Let me see here. Um, this is basically a polymer starting point. So this is our green starting point. It's composed of these n monomer steps. So it just kind of fluctuates around, building, building, building. And this is our end point. So this vector, that r vector that connects our start to our finish, that is going to be our uh, basically displacement vector r. And we are going to square that vector take an average quantity, we'll see that in a second, and then take it to the, uh, to the one half power because again, we want to describe basically the uh, kind of the size of a polymer, we want the distance, so we need units of meters. So uh, more on that a little bit later. Now, whenever you see in this course, and hope in other courses too, hopefully people use you know similar notations, but that's not always the case. If you see these kind of uh, angled brackets right here, that indicates an average quantity. So we are going to average, uh, Basically, that size, that vector that we see, uh, let me go down to here. We are going to average this vector. We're going to calculate this vector over many, 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 many microstates or confirmations. Um, so we are going to look at, and when we talk about microstates or confirmations, um, you'll kind of see this omega sign that indicates basically the number of microstates. So that goes into supplemental um, thermodynamic lecture notes. A, ln, omega, or conformational entropy. That's one way to kind of calculate it if you know from statistical mechanics. But again, a little bit later, we'll, we'll see this a little bit later on in some of our derivations. But the key thing is we're going to average over many number of microstates or confirmations. So you could uh, basically uh, average over time. So we could average this as a function of time for one polymer. Or we can take one snapshot of basically identical polymers, like in a bath. So just have tons and tons and tons of polymers here. You could take one snap, snapshot at time t equals, you know, t star, and then you could calculate uh, your r squared, root mean squared, and then distance for all those polymer chains and use that as your average quantity. So that's one way to kind of think about uh, calculating uh, root mean squared end to end distance. So let's do uh, kind of a, an example of a really extreme example of a fully extended linear rigid rod like polymer architecture that's extended all the way. So if we look over here, so if I have a rigid chain, so it's made of n number of monomer units, the uh, basically monomer length uh, is L. Hopefully people know if I have, uh, example, people know approximately what this distance is for a fully saturated carbon bond, single carbon bond here. I hear you all saying it. Yep, 1.54 angstroms. So just a good value to kind of have on hand as you're calculating these values. So if I have a completely rigid chain, so if my number of microstates here is one, so if I pull this all the way out where there's, it's completely fully extended, um, it can't move, it can't fluctuate at all. Let's calculate what will be my R vector. What is going to be the vector from this distance here that connects this end distance? I should have drawn that polymer as red. This distance here. Well. That R vector going from here to here, it's just going to be the distance is just n times the number 
the number of monitoring units n times the monomer length l. That's your r vector. So now if I want to calculate my r squared, that is just going to be n squared l squared. That's it. So, and then if I want to do my root mean squared end to end displacement, it's just going to be nl. And this is a very special quantity. We call this capital L. That is the contour length of a polymer. So the fully extended distance of a polymer. So that's your first root mean squared end to end distance uh, calculation. <laughs> so that contour length is a really, really important quantity. Um, you'll see that uh, referred to a lot when we talk about polymers to kind of normalize or get a sense of what's happening here. Um, so let's do a quick example before we get on to uh, some, uh, what I enjoy is, which is the, um, our, our derivations, but you may, hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. But anyways, let's do a quick problem first. So what is going to be the root mean squared end-to-end -end distance of polyethylene with a uh, DPN, degree of polymerization, number average of uh, 10,000? Well, I know that polyethylene, just like this, favorite polymer to draw, because it's so easy. And there's so many cool things, uh, free chain growth polymerization, uh, isomeric states, uh, polyethylene is so ubiquitous and super cool. Um, don't hide this answer. <laughs> so I know basically this monomer length is going to be approximately uh, 1.4 or 1.54 angstroms. That's the length of that bond. Now you might, you know, think about, well, what's happening here and here. Again, that's going to be like half a bond length. Again, we're not, or, we're not worried in this course with exact numbers. We're looking at scaling. And specifically, with this root mean squared end-to-end -end distance, uh, as we kind of saw previously, we saw it as a function of n and l, right? For the fully extended, the contour length uh, of a polymer. So actually, we should add contour length. But anyways, um, what we're interested in here, is l going to change appreciably for a polymer? Not really. Even if you have different polymers, it's not going to change you know, drastically. Your monomer length is going to be very similar for different polymers. But what's really going to kind of change here is we want to see how does this distance, the size of our polymer, scale with n? Does it scale to the 1? Does it scale to the 1 half? Does it scale to the 3 fifths? That's what we're going to be concerned is, with. What is this kind of scaling parameter alpha here? Uh, we're always concerned in this class. I don't care what the actual, the final number is. I'm care, I care about the scaling. I care about the relationships. I care about the trends. So... Uh, but for this one, we actually have to calculate a value. So this is equal to L. We know that my contour length is just going to be L, which is equal to NL, which for this case is 10,000, or basically 1 times 10 to the fourth times basically 1 times 10 minus 10. So that is going to leave us with something on the order of micrometer. Pretty big for polymers. Uh, so again, uh, building that up, that's, a, uh, again, so you can see 10 micrometers would be for 100K. But anyways, that's a little bit uh, beyond the scope, or not beyond the scope, but uh, just to kind of get a sense of the size of uh, polymers that you'll be working with. So next time, we're going to get into our first model, which is the ideal or the freely jointed chain or Gaussian model, uh, also kind of sometimes called the mathematician's model. Uh, and it's a very extreme situation, uh, but it's going to give us kind of our first sense of how this polymer is going to scale in terms of the size and that root mean squared end to end distance. So thanks, and I'll see you all next time for some more uh, polymer physics talk. All right. Have a good one. Stay safe. Bye.